to James chapter 3, verse 10. Well, let's start at verse 8. All right, I'll read verse 10 and I'll read verse 8. Hallelujah. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. And are these cursings, are you damning from the hell? No, that's X-rated, perverted. You need to get your facts straight. Verse 8 tells us, but the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Where therewith, therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. You know what? Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter water? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, or a vine bear figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water. You judge without love and you think and you know what? What kind of cursing is that? You serpents! How shall you escape the damnation of hell? Was Jesus cursing people then? You know what? Jesus even called Peter and Judas as two apostles their bodies, and they get out here and display themselves like they just did. Now you know why I don't believe them. Because I wasn't born last night. Now, I love you, and I will pray for you. God won't even hear your prayers. And you mentioned, and God hears my prayers. Oh, I got a hotline over there for you. Well, Jim, when you're on the stand being sued for slander, we'll see you. No, stop it. You know what? Here's a silly college girl. Uh, she, she's caught the big buzzword these days, uh, slander and lawsuits. Do you, do you know what the definition of slander is? What? Tell us, brother. Very good. Speaking an untruth about somebody. It's not about somebody that you don't want to hear. I can't. No. Oh, no. I'm a holy saint. Hallelujah. And here's the good news. You can be saints also, but most of you don't want to because you love your sins. And you know what? Bible tells this in First Thess Thessalonians 5:23, and the God of peace sanctify you wholly and entirely, and your whole spirit, soul, and from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. God says, "I am holy, so be." of you here, especially you religious hypocrites, you want God's forgiveness, you want God's forgiveness without the power of God to cleanse you from that sin and take that sin away from your life. You know what you remind me of? You remind me of a person who goes up to God and kicks God right in the shin. And you say, oh God, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, I won't do it anymore. Five minutes later, oh God, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, I won't do it anymore. 
Five minutes later. Now, do you think God is stupid? Yeah, it was just his messengers like you. Do you think that God will actually believe that you are sincerely sorry for kicking him in the shin while you still persist in kicking him in the shin? And you know what? God knows if you're sincerely sorry for kicking him in the shin. You'll know this if and when you stop kicking him in the shin. And if you don't stop kicking him, he knows you're not sorry, and he won't forgive you. You have to convince God that you mean business, and you are sincerely remorseful for sinning against him. For sin, you can go five minutes without sin. If you go five minutes without sin, you go half an hour, then an hour, then a half day, whole day, week, this would be a very good time to tell you the Brother Jim story. Yeah. Uh, I knew you were waiting for it. Yeah, the 10,000. 15,000. 15,000. That's it. time for the life and times of Brother Jim. Subtitled, The Rise and the Fall of a Drug Crazed, Booze Guzzling, Sex Perverted, Rock and Roll Freak. subtitle, What Really Happened at the Van Halen Concert. Now, students, the 1980 invasion. Now, you may not believe this. You may find this shocking and appalling. But I have not always been like this. here is in Freud's anal stage. He seems to have a fixation on rectums. He is obviously obsessed with sphincter muscles. Now, when I was in the eighth grade, in drugs, sex, booze, and rock and roll. My freshman year of high school, I thought it would be a great accomplishment, a great achievement, to spend the first 30 days of high school totally stoned out of my mind. And so I did so. Wish I could afford it. Do you know why I did this? Because the devil told me that I would have an advantage over everyone else who is not likewise stoned. But I soon found out I was the one at the disadvantage. My friends were adjusting to high school faster and learning more than I was. I found out I had been duped by the devil. I was a stooge of Satan. As far as I'm going, pervert. 
Now, and by my sophomore year of high school, I had been arrested three times. For, for the possession of alcoholic beverages and under 30 grams of marijuana. I was a big drug dealer this time. Now listen up. And one of these times I was arrested by the dean of students when he walked into the bathroom and found my best friend and myself smoking in the boys' room. Now everybody knows that smoking is not allowed in school. This dean said to me, this dean said, Jim, you're busted. <laughs> Just like on the radio program. <laughs> now, do you know what that entitled me to? Now, every other person would have been immediately expelled from school. But my best friend at this time, he was the mayor's son of the city of Evansville, Indiana. And you just don't go around kicking the mayor's son out of high school. And so we were, you keep it hush hush in other words, quiet. So we were entitled to two weeks of in school suspension plus two months of after-school detention, plus work detail for two months on Saturdays. But you know what? I didn't care. I just saw it as a challenge to get high during in-school suspension. And I even got high before detention after school, even on work details on Saturdays. I didn't stop there. I even got high during biology class, study hall, noon hour lunch, and physical education class. I was a daredevil. Do you know how I accomplished all this marijuana smoking in classrooms? By breathing in. I had one of these single hit sneak a toke pipes. I knew it, and so does he, I bet. I wish I did though. Uh, you just have a big skydiver, huh? Graphics. Yeah, eight foot bar, uh, like that. Yeah. Now, here it is. My junior year of high school. I developed a very, very peculiar habit. I had a very peculiar habit. How peculiar? Every morning before school, two of my other friends and myself would sneak outside and down a half a pint of vodka each in five minutes flat. Plus, we'd smoke some more marijuana. And then for lunch that year, I would sneak out across the street to my other friend's house. <laughs> and we'd break out his bong. And we'd fire up some more. school that year on my way to work, you might be wondering where I worked. Yeah. And where I got all the money for these drugs I was consuming. Well, as I mentioned, I was dealing in drugs, but also ever since the eighth grade, I was working in area bike shops. By the age of 16, I had mastered the art of bicycle mechanics. I was
was even Schwinn factory trained.